have you been keeping up with my shows here recently? If not, you're missing out. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Wednesday. It is March 22nd. Now, I'm getting the distinct impression that a lot of you have been missing my shows here recently. Why? <laughs> because my views are way down. And that's okay, honestly. I do want them up, but my real concern is that you're missing out on taking some gains. Folks, we've had a lot of stocks we've looked at over the last week that are taking gains right now. CYN, PTRA, SFIO, and two of them we just looked at yesterday, TOI, that's up almost 30% today, and SWISF, that's up almost 10% today. So we are catching runners by looking at these warm charts. We're looking at OTC and penny stocks. That is to say, any stock under five bucks. We're looking at their charts, trying to find a warm chart that's ready for a breakout, that has volume coming in. And then we go find news to back up that chart because it's already set up to run. Why waste good news on a bad chart? So those are the sort of things I go looking for every day and I share with you every day. And when I do all that research, I do it here primarily at the otcmarkets.com website. This site is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. That's fantastic. I've got a source of great information, my share structure, my filings, my news, tier changes, stock splits. They bring all that information here and it's updated every single day. Plus, they bring in a lot of information for the major exchanges. So this is where I always start. Now, no site is perfect. There are things missing here and there. Well, then I can go to the internet. But otherwise, I start right here. This saves me so much frustration and time. So how did our OTC fare today? Okay, before I refresh it, let's see what we got. 6.1 billion. Oh, we better refresh it. Our trades is under 200,000. That's bloody scary to me. Whew. Thank God for that. Our dollar volume, still under 2 billion. We're at 1.5 billion. Share volume, still under 10 billion, but we are climbing. I think this is four days in a row coming from 4.7. We're up to 6.7 billion. And our trades, yeah, it bounced when I refreshed the page, but not high enough. We need to get back up over 250,000. I was complaining about that number before because it was the floor and we couldn't get off of it. Now we can't keep near it. So it doesn't look like we're doing a whole lot more on the OTC market. A little up, a little down, but we're not getting anywhere real fast. Now, I've got some interesting stocks to share with you today. We do have nice charts and we do have interesting news. I got no problem looking at a stock more than once if it's going to keep making me money. This is XTRAF, Extract One Technologies. We looked at this back on February 27th, and over the next five days, we got 26% gains out of her. Now she has dropped back, but she's looking good. Looks like she's ready to climb again, and it's good timing because they just had financials come out, and they're good. XTRAF. She finished the day at about 52 and a half cents with about 2% drop. She is on the best tier of the OTC, the QX. This is the most transparent, the most trustworthy. You have to audit your financials. They give us a ton of information. And they have been voted to the top 50 of the QX stocks. I don't know how many there are. There's a lot of them. And they're in the top 50. So that definitely adds to their credentials. Speaking of credentials, they got every green tick we could be looking for here. So they look secure. They look solid. So what is Extract One Technologies into? Threat protection. They're guarding our entryways from people coming in carrying weapons. The company makes unobtrusive threat detection systems that enable venue building operators to prioritize and deliver improved patron experiences while providing unprecedented safety. Extract One's innovative multi-sensor gateway product enables companies to convertly screen for weapons at points of entry without disrupting the flow of traffic. 
Its AI-based extract vision allows venue and building operators to identify weapons and other threats inside and outside of facilities. And the Extract One Insights provides valuable intelligence for optimizing operations for the future. So they've got those entryways, they're concealed, they're wide open, they've also got cameras out there, and all that information comes to their platform and their AI works with it to detect these things before things happen. That's what AI is all about. It's supposed to predict situations before they occur. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, it has dropped a little bit. We've gone from 185,000 shares a day to 152,000 shares a day. Now, I can't imagine the numbers were too different back on February 27th when we looked at it. And we got 26% gains out of the next five-day rise. So, I wouldn't be too worried about low volume when the entire market itself isn't getting a whole lot of volume. What is the share structure for this company? I remember from the last time we were here. We got 183 million outstanding. They give us a nice smorgasbord of numbers here to choose from, and none of them are right. It was 129 million, according to Google. Taking a look at our financials. Well, this has changed since the last time we were here. They've had one more quarter added to it. At the end of 2021, July is the end of their fiscal year, they did $866,000, not 100. We've got three zeros here we got to put behind any of the numbers on these charts. Looking at that quarterly, all right, we've got one missing here. Don't know why. Uh, we've got a quarterly report for October, and we've got one here that just came out in January for $610,000 and $474,000. So you've got $1.1 million here. Now, that really doesn't say a lot, and the numbers aren't very big, so why are we getting excited about it? Well, let's jump into the news press that explains this. Now, we're not going to go from top to bottom and go through everything, but I want to give you a feel for what this financial was about. The stock, the price has come down, and I think this is good enough to get it to go up. There's nothing bad here. So, this is a summary of the key business highlights for the three months ended January 31st. Uh, they had accelerated top line growth. Uh, they made approximately $700,000. That is up 212% compared to the same period a year ago. They've got $3.9 million in backlog. That means they've got business waiting to be done. People holding money out in front of them saying, please, please sue me. So they got that plus an additional three million pending installation. Then they've got a lot of contracts that they're involved in right now. Secured a contract with Oakview Group to protect all entrances at Total Mortgage Arena in Bridgeport, Connecticut. This is the home of the New York Islanders American Hockey League team. They also have another contract with the same company to protect the entrances of a skewer arena in Palm Desert. This is the home of Seattle Kraken's American Hockey League team. Another contract with Lakewood School District in New Jersey, Hyundai Transit in West Point, Georgia. They've expanded their deployment in casinos in California, and they've received a couple awards for their products. They've completed an investment of $8.4 million. They got it. They got $8.4 million from Madison Square Garden Sports Corps. They also entered into a business agreement with them, and this is a huge agreement. This agreement is to protect their establishments, including New York's Madison Square Garden, the theater at Madison Square Garden, Radio City Music Hall and Beacon Theater, the Chicago Theater, and the SSG Theater. Sphere in Las Vegas. Blah, 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 blah. Everything Madison Square Gardens has got, they are protecting. So they've got lots of business in the queue waiting to be done. They're already doing a lot of business. They've increased their revenues by multiple hundreds of percent. As I said, there's nothing wrong here. Everything is growing. Everything looks good. It is getting greener and bigger. I think the charts are ready to jump again. Let's go take a look at that chart. Is it extra F or extra F? I guess it really doesn't matter. In either case, I've got its chart up on Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform I got from TD Ameritrade when I signed up for their free trading account. So can you.
So six month, four hour chart for XTRAF. 35 cents was our low here at the end of December, and we hit a high here of 63 cents uh, just here at the beginning of March. This is when we looked at it right here on February 27th. We looked at it at about 49 cents and we got our 26% when she hit her high. She came outside of that channel that she's been running in ever since that low bubble. Once she broke out, she came back in, fell right to the floor. No, right there, crawled across the floor, has now gotten on her feet and is jumping up, ready to run again. She's tapping her head right on the 50% mark of our channel. Our volume is real thick and heavy down here, though it's not super strong today like other days. It is thick. Our technicals are looking really good. We've got a nice setup here between our PPO. This is our percentage price oscillator, very much like the MACD. They look the same. You read them the same. You want that blue line on top of the other line. But the percentage price oscillator is only working with a percentage of the price, where the MACD works with the full price. And this red line is my ADX. This shows me trend continuation. What I mean by that is a straight line. It doesn't matter if it's up or down. As long as this line is going straight, wherever the trend is going, that's what this is showing. So as long as that line continues in that straight line, it means my uptrend is going to continue going up. So what I've got here is a spread between the blue line and the red line. When that is spreading, guaranteed 100% your price is going up. And it works exactly the opposite. When the blue line and the red line are coming together, guaranteed your price is coming down. See right here? See right here? Yeah. And our MACD is looking real strong. We've just had a cross over there. It's approaching the signal line and we got green bars accumulating. Only thing showing digression is our RSI. It's pulled back a little bit from 59 down to 51. We can't see it here, but we'll probably see it on the 20 day, one hour chart. Yeah, there's our red bars right there at the back half of the day. So here she is riding in her channel. This is when we looked at it. She got up outside of the channel, came back down, crawled across the floor, has gotten up over the 50 and the 200 day SMA. She really pushed, she got above the 50% mark and has pulled back and is struggling right now with the nine day SMA, but she's won the big battle. She has gotten on top of the 50 and on top of the 200. Our technicals, well, they're showing that pullback right now. Let's look at our five day, five minute. So here's our low of 45 cents. And let's see, is that the bottom? That is the bottom of our channel right there. She came back in, rolled across the bottom, pushed up, got over 50, over her 200, actually got up over top of the 50% mark, is pulled back and is look, look, that is a nice placement, folks. She's sitting on top of a very strong 50 day SMA. Our technicals, all right. It is still in the midst of the fall. It doesn't look like it's going to bounce off of it in a heartbeat. But the whole point is getting set. We want to get in at a good price. This is a good place for her to bounce. If not here, probably the 200. It's not a guarantee, but she is on an uptrend right now. She is on a breakout. She's trying to push up. And I think coming from the bottom of the channel's floor, she wants to get back up here to 62 cents. And if the investors really see the value in this financial, we could get another breakout. So I like XTRAF. I'd watch for her to pull back a little bit more, but as soon as you start seeing some volume come in, that's probably when she's going to move. Our next stock comes from the major exchange. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is SOPA, ticker SOPA, Society Pass Incorporated. Boy, when I saw this chart, I was really hoping to find some good news. I mean, look at that chart. It's beautiful. She is in the midst of the breakout right now. There's the wave. Grab your board and let's go surfing, dude. This is high tide. So I came over here with my fingers crossed, hoping I'd find something. There were no filings, but there was a recent news press. A group called Think Equity, an unbiased group, did a review on this company, and it's hot. I think it's got enough to push this chart. So SOPA, she finished the day at $1.22 with just a little over 7% gains. So what is SOPA all about? Well, real briefly, because we'll get more information looking at that news press, SOPA was founded in 2018 and they are a data-driven loyalty fintech and e-commerce ecosystem in the fast-growing markets of Vietnam, Indonesia, 
Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand, which account for more than 80% of the SEA population and with offices located in lots of cities abroad. And as I said, we'll get more information when we dive into that news press. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, we had a small increase maybe about uh, 50 percent right she jumped from 137,000 shares to 205,000 shares share structure for sopa well it's not going to be a bad float i'll tell you that much outstanding shares is only 26.6 million and i'm not going to find it in the financial so i've got to do a google search to find this and what do we got 17.2 16.4 16.4 16.2 that it i think that's it so roughly between 16 and 17 million is what we're looking at for the float that's not bad at all taking a gander at her financials at the end of 2021 she was doing about a half a million dollars worth of business but she was running at hundred and ninety thousand dollars loss looking at the quarterlies for 2022 we got three quarters here the last one is due right now. First quarter, they did a half a million. Second quarter, a half a million. Hoo hoo! Look at that third quarter increase to two million. That is a 400% increase from June till September. Wonder what happened there. Looking at her financials, she has one 8K here, but it is inconsequential to the chart. And the news. Well, she does have lots of news and most of it is about business that they're doing over in Indonesia and Southeast Asia. However, I want to focus in on this piece of news that came out on the 14th. Think Equity issues a research report on Society Pass, Southeast Asia's next generation data-driven loyalty fintech and e-commerce ecosystem. And of course, I'm not going to cover it all, but there are some very strong bullets in here. Revenues are forecast to grow, check this out, from 6 million in 2022 to 42 million in 2023. They also have 20 million cash on hand and they've dropped their cash burn, big number, from 1.2 million down to 150,000. Woo, what a budget cut. The holdings company, the group has acquired eight companies, seven of which they did in 2022, and they are targeting seven to 10 more acquisitions in 2023. The company has an impending digital wallet partnership with Alipay, the payments arm of Alibaba Group, which is a huge company. They do a lot of business and the money that they move is huge money. This is corporation to corporations. Society Pass acquired Leaflare, based in Vietnam, out of bankruptcy in 2021. The company's rebuilt the platform and they are now generating $2 million. The company intends to spin out Leafflare as a separate publicly listed company in 2023. They're going to spin this out. There's going to be free dividends for anybody who owns shares in this company. Now, they give us some uh, details about those companies that they've acquired. They have acquired three food and beverage delivery companies in Vietnam and the Philippines. However, the company says they're not investing in food and beverage delivery anymore because it is inherently an unprofitable business. That's what they say. They're in the telecom business. They have something called Gorilla, which is a Singapore-based blockchain Web3 technology-enabled mobile virtual network operator. They're involved in digital media. Thoughtful Media is a leading influencer advertising company in Southeast Asia, generating $6.5 million in sales in 2022. And one of their other acquisitions was Noosa Trip. This is all about travel. So you can see they have got a lot going on. Money is coming in. Their projections are what? 700 times the revenue of last year. They're going to jump from 6 billion, or billion, we wish, 6 million to 42 million. So I don't see anything bad here. There's nothing bad anywhere looming. It all looks good and bright, and the chart is warm and set up for a run. So I think now is the time to look at the stock. Let's go take a look at that chart. You're going to have to get off the sofa if you want to look at SOPA. <laughs> I'm trying here. This is ticker SOPA, six-month, four-hour chart. Stop it.
<laughs> All right, we got a high bubble back here of $3.14 in August, and we hit a low of $0.81 cents at the beginning of this month. And off of that low bubble, she has changed directions. It was right here that she started her uptrend. It took a while to get there, but this is where the trend started. She's bounced off that floor, and she is right up at the top of that channel right now, about ready to break out. She's already crossed her 50 or 200 and hasn't looked back. Not one second tap. She just kept running, and now she's breaking out of her channel. Our volume has been strong. It is whittling back just a wee bit right now, but it's a lot stronger here than it was back here. And our technicals are very strong. Our PPO is pushing up very hard, going to the moon right now, just like our MACD. And our RSI is clear up at 65. Looking at that 20 day, one hour view. So once she came up off that low bubble, she took, oh man, five, six days here before she got over that 200. And it has been a slow climb, but she's picking up momentum now. She's pushed herself right up to the top of that channel and she has broke out of the channel, hitting a high today of $1.26. Our technicals, all of them are strong. PPO, MACD, all pushing up. RSI is pulling back just a wee bit because of that little red blip right there after market hours. But it is currently at 64. Five day, five minute chart. She's looking good, folks. We got a low bubble in this corner and a high bubble in that corner. That's what you want. That is from one corner to the other, an uptrend. She has gone from 95 cents to $1.26 in the last five days. She's come from underneath that channel, through the channel, out of the channel on the other side. And it looks like she wants to continue. Now I do see she is pulling back right here. I would expect some bouncing off of the top of this channel. She may even come back underneath it a little bit. But the way things look, there's a strong probability, not a guarantee, that she will test it and then bounce back up and start to climb. All of our technicals right now are very weak. With all of that pullback in the aftermarket hours, there's not a lot to see. But personally, I like SOPA. I think it's worth putting on your watch list. Now here's a company most of you are probably familiar with. Ticker GTII, Global Tech Industries. She's been in the spotlight for all sorts of different things for quite a while. Not too long ago, she caught a lot of attention on the charts for making a deal with Wildfire Media, and they're still working on that deal right now. I noticed her when she was being shorted real heavy. There was a lot of trades. I like to monitor trades. I see if there's two trades on a stock that day, I know there was no more than two people that traded that stock. If I see 100 trades, well, I know there could be up to 100 people. Not necessarily that many, but there could be. Well, a high trade day, it's like three, 400 trades. That's pretty impressive. Well, GTII was doing 3,000 trades a day, then 5,000, then eight, then 11, then 14,000 trades in a single day. Was blowing my mind. I was so impressed that I had to share it with you. Then they were in the spotlight because the CEO started fighting back against the shorters who are selling shares of the stock at lower prices, bringing the price down. Well, what he did was try to give us a digital dividend. However, when he filed for it with FINRA, FINRA said, we can't do that. We don't have the technology. It's not that the technology doesn't exist. It's just that FINRA doesn't have it and doesn't use it. So that's what's been going on with this company. Well, here recently they started some legal action to find people who are naked shorting the company. Naked shorts are when you're selling shares that don't even exist. You're making shares up. They're synthetic. Somebody's being paid for nothing. And the worst part is, is that these transactions are being documented somewhere. Well, if shares don't exist and someone's being paid for them, that really screws things up. Up. And on top of that, naked shorting is illegal. It's been illegal since 2008. Well, they just had some big news come out about their legal activities, and I think it could get this stock running big. So GTII, she finished the day at $2.14 with almost 4% gains. She's on the middle tier. This is the better tier. This is the tier you have to start auditing your financials. On the pink, you don't have to audit, no CPAs. But on the OTCQB, you must. So they are more transparent, they are more trustworthy.
They've got that verified profile and transfer agent I'm always telling you to look for. There's a lot of important information being represented by these green ticks. And if you're going to be in a stock for a long haul on the OTC, it's just best to get as much validated information as you can. They've got independent directors as well. You need these if you're going to uplist from anywhere to anywhere. And I'm sure they used them to get from the pink to the QB. And if they have any more aspirations to go on, they're going to need them then as well. Now, Global Tech is a holdings company. They hold other companies and let them do all the work and they support those companies in their business. And from what I understand, they've got four main subsidiaries and those subsidiaries have subsidiaries of their own and they got lots of businesses going on. But we're not going to focus in on that primarily because that's not what I think is going to get the stock running. It is this new news. So what was the relative volume around the company today? She actually dropped. Now, I was worried. I was watching the chart and I'm thinking, oh, I hope I can get this out to them before this thing takes off because it looked like it was ready to take off earlier today. But she's just hanging tight. She's doing roughly a million shares a day. Share structure for GTII, we have 306 million in the outstanding. They tell us unrestricted is 104 million. Now, I always think of the unrestricted as the float. If you can put them on the market, I consider them the float. And that's what unrestricted shares are, ones you can put on the market. But it's not always the case. And the float, well, that's not too long ago. That's September of last year. They say it's 75, but that's a huge difference. So, as usual, I've jumped on over here to Google. And what did I find? I've got 197. 197, 197. It is unanimous across the board. Our float is 197, which was not even on the table here. But that's what Google says, and we're just taking Google's word for it. Financials for GTII. At the end of 2021, they did $24,000 with the business, and they got to keep $19,000 of it. 2022 is not looking good, is it? So it's a good thing we're not looking at the financials for our catalyst. Now we've only got one current filing here. It is an 8K that came out on the 14th and it is related to the news. Now they've got lots of news here, but I'm focusing in on what's most important right now. This is when they started their pursuit of legal action against the naked shorters back at the beginning of February. And then they tell us here they're still working on that deal with Wildfire Media, which definitely had the chart on fire for a while. And this news, this came out just at the beginning of this month and it's got me confused. GTII is giving us a dividend for nothing. It's free. There's not a spin out. There's no reverse split. There's nothing happening. They're going to give us one free share for every 10 shares that you own. The problem is it's a restricted share. Now, remember what I was just saying about unrestricted shares go on the market? Restricted shares don't. So that means you can't sell it. Now, I'll be honest. I don't know everything there is to know about restricted shares, but everything I've learned, if you hold them, you're just holding them. There's never a market to sell them on, so I don't know what the big deal is about that. Then we've got the news that came out today. Global Tech Industries Group gets confirmation its complaint has been served on all defendants. Global Tech Industries Group announced today that the lawsuit previously filed by the company in the United States District Court in the Southern District of New York has officially been served on all defendants, including Canaccord Genuality, Credit Suisse Securities, Istanet LLC, Lime Trading Corporation, and GTS Securities. The company looks forward to its day in court. Folks, the reason this is going to be so big because it's precedent. I don't think this has ever been done in our courthouses before. Like I said, naked shorting is illegal. This is 2023 and it was made illegal in 2008 and it has been being done all of this time. And it's these hedge funds that are making billions of dollars shorting, bringing our stock prices down and then because the shares don't exist, they don't have to give them back. And that's what shorting is. You're borrowing shares, you sell them at $20 a share, you 
you sell them cheap as the price falls, you keep selling more and more. And then when they get really cheap, down at $10, you buy them all back for half price and you give them back. So between 10 and 20, you made all that profit. But when you're selling naked shares, there are no shares. You're screwing with the entire system. You're screwing with the price of the stock. You're screwing with the company. You're screwing with the investors. And if this court case goes through and these hedge funds are found guilty, I cannot even imagine what's going to happen. But I think this could be very exciting. I don't see any money attached to it. I mean, maybe way down the road. But right now, it's just a fact of what they are doing. What GTI is doing is leading the charge. And I think that could get a lot of investors excited. Let's take a look at that chart. Just to be clear here, I did not find GTII by looking at the charts first. Not that there's anything wrong with that chart, but it doesn't scream breakout to me. Not in my opinion. But the news, hoo hoo, that news is big, that news is huge, that is breakout news. So we are looking at GTII, six month, four hour view. We got a low here of 43 cents in August. Two months later, we are at a high of virtually $9. That is over 1,900% gains. And all of this run was on that wildfire media deal. Once she hit her high, she came all the way back down, hit a low here of 45 cents, almost hitting her low of 43. And she has changed her trend since that time. She's been stuck in this channel, got over 200, brought every single SMA with her, and they're all in the right place. She's right here on top of her nine, which is on top of the 20, on top of the 50, on top of the 200. And that's the way you want them, starting from the small, going sequentially down to the bottom and the heaviest. Our volume has been decreasing, but it's been strong, and it is still growing with the volume we have. And our technicals are looking pretty good. Our PPO is pushing up. We just had a crossover on our MACD pushing up, and our RSI is clear up at 67 on our four-hour chart. 20-day, one-hour view. We had a low here of $1.07 when she was underneath the channel, broke into the channel, over the 200, over the halfway mark in our channel, came back down to the 200 and is rolling back up. And I'm not quite sure what she's going to do here. She could roll uphill just like that. Our technicals say she is pulling back just a little bit right now. You can see she's starting to go sideways and consolidate. Five day, five minute. Ooh, we got a nice bowl going right there, right? That 200 came down and is now barreling up. We've got our price doing the same thing, bringing all the SMAs with it. She pretty much was going sideways today, except for that one bounce at $2.20. Now, what we're looking for here, folks, isn't a steady growth. We're looking for an explosion. I'm waiting for this news to get onto Twitter, to get onto these forums, for people to get excited about it. Hoorah, let's get them naked shorters. Yeah. And I'm expecting this just to take off since this is the first company who is at this point in this game. So GTII, it's a wild card, but it could be hot fire, folks. Now, the three stocks we looked at all got decent charts and all got catalysts. Now, SOPA, S-O-P-A, and XDRAF, they've got soft catalysts, but they do have nice heated charts. So I expect all that good news about their accomplishments and their financials will be enough to get them to move. They don't have to have a big piece of catalyst like a merger or an acquisition. Now, GTII, on the other hand, that is big news. You got this little company suing these huge hedge fund companies. And the truth of the matter is they're suing for money not just an apology, right? So there could be hundreds of millions of dollars at stake here. So there could be a lot of excitement around this stock. We've seen it before when other small OTC companies sue major companies. So I would keep my eye on GTII. Due diligence, folks. That's how we're finding these, looking at the news and looking at the charts. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.